In my previous video titled Fatty Acid Metabolism, I cover how beta oxidation of saturated fatty acids involves four repeating steps that parallel the reverse reactions of fatty acid biosynthesis catalyzed by four domains of fatty acid synthase. In this video, I'll focus on several different types of fatty acid oxidation. Mammals derive greatest amount of energy from beta oxidation of median chain fatty acids, abbreviated as MCFA, as well as long chain fatty acids, abbreviated as LCFA, which takes place in the mitochondria. To recap, beta oxidation of saturated fatty acids involves four repeating steps that oxidizes and releases the two carbons from the carboxyl end as acetyl-CoA. First, acyl-CoA dehydrogenase produces a double bond between the alpha and beta carbons forming trans-enol-CoA, which is coupled to the reduction of FAD to FADH2. Next, enol-CoA hydratase catalyzes a hydration reaction to enol-CoA, producing beta hydroxy coa which is coupled to the reduction of NAD plus to NADH. Lastly, the enzyme thiolase cleaves the carboxy terminal 2-carbon fragment of beta keto coa as acetyl-CoA, producing a shorter coa that can begin a new round of beta oxidation. In mitochondria, acetyl-CoA can then enter the citric acid cycle to be degraded to carbon dioxide. This process is known as beta oxidation because beta carbon is oxidized to generate energy. Besides mitochondria, peroxisomes can also carry out beta oxidation, which involves the same four repeating steps as mitochondrial beta oxidation but doesn't really contribute to energy production. Peroxisomal beta oxidation is much more active on very long-chain fatty acids, abbreviated as VLCFA, as well as branched-chain fatty acids, abbreviated as VCFA. In peroxisomes, oxidase passes electrons from FADH2 directly to oxygen, reducing it to hydrogen peroxide, which is a strong oxidant and is immediately cleaved to water and oxygen by catalase. The energy released from the first oxidation step isn't conserved as ATP, but is dissipated as heat. The NADH formed in the second oxidative step is exported to mitochondria to be reoxidized. In X-linked adrenal leukodystrophy, abbreviated as XALD, peroxisomes lack a functional transporter for very long-chain fatty acids, resulting in accumulation of very long-chain fatty acids in blood, which will lead to loss of vision, behavioral disturbances, and death within a few years. XALD can be treated by Lorenzo's oil, which reduces the levels of very long-chain fatty acids. Oxidation of unsaturated fatty acids require two auxiliary or helper enzymes. When there is a cis double bond at the fourth carbon, the cis delta enol coa is first oxidized by acyl-CoA dehydrogenase, which is the first step of beta oxidation to produce FADH2 and trans-delta-2 cis-delta-4 dienol coa. Then, the auxiliary enzyme dienol-CoA reductase reduces 2,4-dienol-CoA to trans-delta-3-enol-CoA, which is coupled to the oxidation of NADPH to NADP+. A double bond at the third carbon is still not a substrate for beta oxidation. Therefore, another auxiliary enzyme, delta-3-delta-2-enol-CoA isomerase, then isomerizes trans-delta-3-enol-CoA to trans-delta-2-enol-CoA which is the substrate for the second reaction in beta oxidation, catalyzed by enol-CoA hydratase. The beta hydroxy-CoA then continues with beta oxidation. In terms of energy loss compared to oxidation of saturated fatty acids, every time a double bond at the fourth carbon is encountered, an additional molecule of NADPH is spent by dienol-CoA reductase. And every time a cis double bond at the third carbon is encountered, it is also converted to delta-2 trans-enol-CoA by delta-3-delta-2-enol-CoA isomerase, which results in one fewer FADH2 produced because the first step of beta oxidation is omitted. Oxidation of odd-chain or odd-number fatty acids would ultimately produce many acetyl-CoAs and a 3-carbon propanyl-CoA, which requires three additional enzymes to enter the citric acid cycle. First, propanyl-CoA undergoes oxidative carboxylation by propanyl-CoA carboxylase, which requires the cofactor biotin as a carboxyl carrier. This reaction is coupled to the hydrolysis of one ATP molecule to ADP and inorganic phosphate, producing the stereoisomer of methylmalonyl-CoA, which is epimerized to the L-stereoisomer by the enzyme methylmalonyl-CoA epimerase. 
The L-methylmalonyl CoA then undergoes an intramolecular rearrangement, catalyzed by methylmalonyl CoA mutase, to form succinyl CoA, which can enter the citric acid cycle. This reaction requires the coenzyme B12, which is derived from vitamin B12 cobalamin. Note that several amino acids, including isoleucine, phthalene, methionine, and threonine, are also degraded to propionyl CoA and follow the same pathway to enter the citric acid cycle. I've covered these pathways in my previous video titled Amino Acid Metabolism. Besides oxidation at the beta carbon, fatty acids can also be oxidized at the carbon most distant from the carboxyl group, known as the omega carbon. Omega oxidation occurs in the endoplasmic reticulum of liver and kidney, and it is typically a minor pathway for oxidation of median chain fatty acids. First, a mixed function oxidase known as cytochrome P450 introduces the hydroxyl group onto the omega carbon. The oxygen for this group is derived from the molecular oxygen, and the reaction is coupled to the oxidation of NADPH to NADP+. Next, alcohol dehydrogenase oxidizes the omega hydroxyl group to an aldehyde, which is coupled to the reduction of NAD plus to NADH. Next, aldehyde dehydrogenase further oxidizes the omega aldehyde to a carboxyl group, which is also coupled to the reduction of NAD plus to NADH, ultimately producing a fatty acid with a carboxyl group at each end. At this point, either end can be attached to coenzyme A and undergo beta oxidation by the normal route. Eventually, the double-ended fatty acid will produce dicarboxylic acid succinate, which can enter the citric acid cycle. The last type of oxidation deals with branching fatty acids, abbreviated as BCFA, such as phytanic acid, in which the presence of a methyl group on the beta carbon makes beta oxidation impossible. Therefore, branching fatty acids are catabolized in peroxisomes by alpha oxidation. In the oxidation of phytanic acid, for example, phytanoyl CoA hydroxylase first adds a hydroxyl group on the alpha carbon, which requires alpha ketoglurate and ascorbate and produces carbon dioxide and succinate. Alpha hydroxyphytanoyl lyase then removes the carboxyl carbon as formal CoA to produce pristinol. Formal CoA is later oxidized to carbon dioxide. Pristinol is then oxidized to pristanic acid by aldehyde dehydrogenase, which is coupled to the reduction of either NAD plus to NADH or NADP plus to NADPA. Pristanic acid can then go through beta oxidation to produce propionyl CoA, which will enter citric acid cycle through succinyl CoA. The shortened branch chain fatty acid can then go through another round of alpha oxidation. Genetic defect in phytanoyl CoA hydroxylase will result in Refsen's disease which causes high blood levels of phytanic acid and severe neurological problems, including blindness and deafness.